A, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, John Sotomayor is in the studio. It's time for OM Radio. Let's, well, let's keep saying the old name, Ocala Magazine Radio, so you know what that is. And uh, I think John has brought today a topic I'm really excited about. I drive around town. I see a new hotel going up. I see some new theaters going up. I see a new restaurant going up. I see a new interstate ramp going up. There's just so much going on around town. So John has invited some folks who know a little bit about this. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, great, Larry. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Thank you for this topic. I, I like this one. This is a good one. Me too. Good. Uh, we're very... see it everywhere. A- absolutely. How many Wawa's are going up? Five? A six is going to go up by the end of the year. Wow. Uh-huh. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Some, some pieces of property that have been, you know, kind of unoccupied for a long time now are having life breathed into them, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, we have this great team to thank for all of that. They started an initiative about nine years ago called the Ocala Vision 2035. It was oh, really? A, yes, it was an urban development plan. And uh, when I talked to city manager John Zobler, he said, to see how we're doing, just check the list. You'll see that we've been doing everything uh, right on schedule. So it's pretty awesome what Is this team right? together so, has I, done. So it's foresight, right? That's right. So what happens in 2036? Do we just start over? <laughs> Do a new plan. <laughs> the next phase. A new plan. That's yeah, right. I think, uh, so I think I'll probably be dead, Robin, by the time of that one. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. So, Larry, um, the, uh, the the economic development was covered in our March issue, the town and country, where we focused on uh, economic development for the town part plus the country. Two weeks ago, we talked to uh, Chester Weber and Robbie Roberts about development there. So today's guests are going to focus on the town part. And with me today, I have uh, two gentlemen from the Ocala Growth Management uh, Department from the city of Ocala. Mm-hmm. Peter Lee and David Boston are here today. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Again. And we also have the CEO of the Chamber and Economic Partnership, Kevin Shealy. Hey, Kevin. Good morning. Good, Good to see you all. Good to see you, too. What, what is key to making it happen? Like You have this vision. You know what you want to have. Is there a, an element of, oh, gosh, now we need to invite people to live here? Is that part of it? Because we're seeing the population grow as well, right? Right. <clears throat> that is a part of it. Um, there are a lot of moving parts to it. I, th- I think uh, John alluded to the city manager, John Zobler. We've had a lot of plans. One thing that you don't do is let your plans sit on a shelf and gather dust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you take them off and implement from them and use them as uh, dyna- the dynamic documents that they were intended to be. Um, the city manager, city council, with the help of the CEP and a, a really good staff have helped us. Is, is, is the growth paid for by tax money or is it you inviting people like, uh, like, like FedEx to move in and, and, uh, and big organizations to move in? Sure. I, let me, I'm going to jump in. Um, you know, absolutely, if you, especially if you take um, the long-term view what happens. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit to what Pete said. You know, part of what allowed all this to happen is not only was there a plan, but the city really began the steps to begin implementing that plan, uh, to be able to show the private sector, here's where you can go, here, here are some of the things uh, and how you can make that happen. And what's really key, I think sometimes lots of t- or lots of times uh, residents of the city miss is, you know, property taxes are just a small portion of the revenue source for uh, the city of Ocala in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that growth that we see with increased utility use and, and electric and water and sewer and fiber and all those other things so that when you really start looking at that return on investment for local government you realize man those are those are really good deals even to the fact as we look at um, some of the projects we work more closely with some of you know like a McLean or um, a Chewy or some of those where or Cardinal LG they're huge expansion where you're looking at return on investment for the city in a matter of months not even years um, and so that you start running man that those are good investments that is and and are you able to weigh that ahead of time? I mean, how do you how do you avoid the fast talking? Uh, per, what, what do you call a, well, the person who goes to Tallahassee? The, yeah, the like lobbyists. the lobbyists and things. lobbyists. Yeah. How do you how do you how do you uh, see through that guy? Well, you know, and I think part of it is again what Pete references is, is really good staff and leadership. Uh, our team and the team at the city and, and our other partners, you know, it's not getting excited about every person that comes to town with a great idea um, because lots of people can have great ideas. Do they have the ability to make those ideas a reality? Right, right, right. And, and so I think the more, you know, we have a, a very seasoned team. The city has a very seasoned team. And quite frankly, I, I think that we've really embraced in this community that we don't have to take this anything that comes along, uh, that we can look and make sure that we're working with great developers and great projects and things 
things that are really going to add to our community. Will the hotel be up by Light of Ocala? It will be up. I'm not positive that it'll be open, but it'll be right around that time. I'm stay there that night. You do? Yeah. 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 Are you yeah. taking reservations? Get <laughs> your roof, rooftop seat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like being in Times Square on yeah. Times Square. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, on New Year's Eve, right? <laughs> so on the bottom of the hotel, there's going to be a lot of businesses, and then the hotel doesn't start till the second floor? The hotel, yeah, the lobby of the hotel will be on the second floor. Um, the first floor will oh, most really? likely be restaurant uses that engage the street. Mm-hmm. Um, bet- it could be one, but it could be as many as three. There could be other retail spaces also. Mm-hmm. And then um, the lobby, and there's, a, I think, another restaurant space and a mm-hmm. small conference space on the second floor. Mm-hmm. And then the rooms. Now, begin. in that case, the money is from a private investor, right? That's correct. Yeah, so the... And that's, will that's the parking garage be used for the employees of the hotel? The hotel has an agreement to use a portion of the, the parking spaces um, around 100, mm-hmm. uh, a little more than 100, actually. But, yes, they'll use part of it. So mm-hmm. it's, it is exciting to see all the changes. What else is going to happen that we don't see any evidence of yet? Do you, can you shed well, some light? Yeah, a lot happening on the north side of State Road 40 as well. Um, that's in that midtown area just north of downtown. We're seeing a lot of this growth come in downtown, and I think that next phase is going to really activate north of State Road 40. We need that because it's such a beautiful area, and you don't never see people walking over that way for whatever reason. Yeah, part of that is because State Road 40 is kind of perceived as this barrier. It is a major roadway kind of cutting downtown off from midtown. Um, and so you really need to be strategic about guess so, yeah, how you yeah, bridge yeah. that gap. Part of it is having places to go in Midtown that you can walk to easily from downtown. And part of it is looking at the crossings themselves to make them, you know, all a common pattern. You can look at those intersections and do certain design strategies that make it look like it's more of a pedestrian crossway, make it more safe for people crossing the road and vehicles when they're coming into that downtown area can start to see okay i'm entering a place where people are going to be crossing the street so so safety is is something that has they have to believe in if i can add to what david just said larry uh my research has shown that the the committees have looked into some uh, difficulties there that existed like a lack of synergy with businesses uh, a wave of disinvestment continuity and mobility issues and the absence of um uh, social gathering places and stuff. So they, they emphasized uh, there to change that, and the game changer was the uh, Riley Art Center. And that Absolutely. is, yes, and that is um, adding new uh, life and interest in the so area. So beautiful, so nice. Yeah. Exactly. So that the city is now adding uh, other things like the first responder campus that's there, and in the future they're going to focus on the Concord lot that they're still working on, and Pete can uh, shed light on that. But that's attracting businesses there like the Muddy Lotus and others that are now... The Muddy Lotus. That's right. Mm-hmm. I like that name. What yes. is that? What is that? Is that it a is a, a tea place. They serve oh, like tea. Yeah. But, oh, but not tea like you're thinking doilies and grandma no. in her china. Um, right. It, it's a. Uh, uh, it's it's very bohemian. eclectic. Yeah. Yeah. Very bohemian setting. Um, it, very cool. Very like a Asian Eastern. Do you guys like. uh, oversee the airport as well? Is that part of your, we your do. work? Yeah. Yeah. We don't specifically oversee we have an airport but that but that construction that's going on right now is that you yes it is it is us what's gonna what are we looking at there so it's a terminal improvement um there'll be a restaurant it'll be um a much i don't know whether you've been in you were in the old facility or not yeah Yeah, yeah. it'll be um it'll be a little bigger it'll be much brighter a lot more headspace yeah. it'll, it'll be a whole lot bigger and a whole lot nicer he's being very 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 kind <laughs> um, uh, it is you know that is a an important front door for our community mm-hmm. um, you know we we john mentioned town and country we just had the obs sales going on we have obs the the, the big international sales next month um, live oak all these these a lot of our clients come into that airport fly in and, and that's really not been the first impression we want to make uh, this this new facility, and, and to recognize it as a top 100 general aviation airport, and what that means, it, it's going to give us a much better first impression. It's going to be a much better facility. It'll allow us to grow as a community, uh, and I am could not see this facility built any sooner. We really need to see that uh, up, and I'm, I was, saw some construction pictures the other day. Really glad to see how it's coming along. And how about the west side of Ocala? You've um, earmarked some improvements for that area of town. Yeah, we've got a lot going on on the west side of town right now. Um, 
We've got the Royal Oak facility, which you may be familiar with, that old charcoal plant. That was there mm-hmm. for a long time. It was a blight on that community. Um, the city recently tore that down. Uh, so that gives a great opportunity for that whole area to come back to life, for it to reinvent itself. There's a community center that is going to be built mm-hmm. there. Um, that's going to be a big investment. We're making investments in Krosky Commons right now. Um, and that whole area around the community center is going to be built up as kind of a, a community node, a center outside of the downtown that's a place for uh, to build walkable community, to be able to really see that neighborhood come back to life. Such a positive vibe yeah. we're getting from you guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and he, that's just a, a portion of it. I mean, you've got the, another first responder campus mm-hmm. going in that area. You've got the redevelopment of Pine Oaks and what what is that, 1,200 units uh, eventually. I think that's really key for a lot of what we do at the CEP. And and then we're looking at how do we engage with the city and with other partners in West Ocala in a way that's meaningful and significant. Tell me about your um, relationship with the Historical Ocala Preservation Society. Do you guys work in conjunction with each other? to uh, Because we want new buildings, but we also would like to see some of the old stuff, you know, like they've been doing, making them look beautiful like they've been doing. It seems like a really good partnership. Yeah, we have four historical districts in the city we do we do we have the ocala district or the fort king district which is the biggest and the first that's just to the east of city hall um, in the neighborhood south of state road 40 then we have the tuscawilla historic district just north in roughly the same area just north of the boulevard um, that attaches more to the midtown area that we were just talking about we have a small historic district in West Ocala, and we have a downtown district. Um, The latter two, the downtown district and the West Ocala district, are just national districts, but we would like to preserve our history, especially in in those places. And we have several buildings that are listed individually on the National Historic Registry. And can you tell us what may be going in at the corner of uh, State Road 40 and 441? Is there anything that's going to be oh, in, that, where that in pink the works right now? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's actually uh, the corner, a huge, huge area. You know why she's asking? Because we, our listeners ask that all the time. They do. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah there's a, actually that is going, going to be a racetrack gas station site. Um, why do you make the face? Uh, I didn't make a face. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for pointing out, Larry. <laughs> it's not bad enough that you have me on camera. <laughs> that <was> good. <laughs> but I, I will say, I, I don't know that any of us here, I'm, I'll jump in, uh, wanted to see that particularly as a gas station. However, I have to say, the city and the developers did a really nice job. It's, it's going to be a, a nice look for that area. Um, well, we got yeah, because you have restaurants right next door. You've got the Starbucks mm-hmm. and yeah. then the sandwich shop, and that's going to draw people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Broadway's, are, you know, a lot of 2035, and, and John's story, and John alluded to this also, is that about connectivity and expansion, especially of the downtown area. There was a lot of citizens in, of citizen engagement. Um, they identified where the core, where the most activity should take place in the town. And and it was really right around the downtown, extending into Midtown. Broadway, I see as a as a success, you know, now. Um, it's not a work completed, but it's a success. There are a you lot got, of You shops. guys are really doing a great job. We brag about Excellent what you job. guys Absolutely. do all the time. I, I, the improvement we've seen is unbelievable. Can you talk a little bit about the activities? Because th- that just doesn't happen out of nowhere either. You plan those things, right? That's correct. We participate in the first Friday Art Walk, which we love. Mm-hmm. The only part about, about, about participating, you can't walk around, because, you know, we play music on the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ungrad. We don't yeah. You need to money. take turns and walk around. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that, that that kind of a thing is such a great idea. Does that, does, well, we have lots of those in the works? The activation and softwareing is a really important part. Um, it's kind of, in my opinion, secondary. You have to have activated space. You don't want a lot of blank spaces or dark spots in your downtown. You would hope that they would be active uses, restaurants and retail uses. Mm-hmm. We know that we, yeah, you know, yeah. we've had some retail studies. Again, we did not use those as shelf documents. I know that some people really don't like, they have a distaste for studies and and plans, but we've used our plans. Um, our city manager has really been critical to us implementing our plans. And 
like I said, we've had support of the elected officials, the community, the CEP to help us activate it. And it's we're gaining momentum. Mm -hmm. If I can add there, Larry, according to my research, the uh, plan had covered specific uh, checkpoints, categories that they were looking for. So for operational excellence, they were looking to add a lot of art and culture to the area. That's where they added the Magnolia Art Exchange by the old uh, train station. That's wonderful. Absolutely. They looked for fiscal sustainability and quality of life, which is when they uh, converted the Sprint Building into the uh, the uh, Broadway Contemporary Luxury Lofts. That's a nice job, too. Absolutely. Nice. And then for the economic hub, that's where they focused on the Ocala Downtown Market, the uh, the Osceola Rail Repair, and added uh, several different uh, new uh, uh, businesses down in the area, which was attracted by the Downtown Parking Garage and the uh, South Magnolia Mobility Movement. Um, mm -hmm improvement, which was the repavement of the road in the area. So all of this was done in that area to attract people, businesses, and we see the results it, of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's more beautiful every year. You know, the magazine, by the way, Ocala Magazine, makes a big contribution to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. For two, in two ways. Uh, well, probably more than two, but the two I'm thinking of is us, locals. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that was there. Oh, wow. How many times do I see a restaurant in your magazine? Robin, I didn't know this. So that helps us, right? right? Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about the visitors also. People stopping on the interstate, maybe yes. they think, well, I'm not going to go any pa anywhere past this one hotel, and then I'm going to go on yeah. my way to Disney. And then they pick up your magazine, they go, hey, why don't we check this out? There's an event. We had this happen just the other day. We mm -hmm. had uh, a group in here from Clearwater, they, would yes. do, they did a radio play. I did the same face you did. Yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful. But, but they did, they <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Yeah. So, so they did, you know, they did, and they said, what, you know, what's going on today? So Robin right away went to your magazine yes. and found some stuff that they went and did. It's interesting mm -hmm. you say that because uh, traditionally our town and country issue comes out in January, the start of the year, and we've always used that as a gauge for visitors coming in yeah, yeah. and had a hard copy that was distributed in hotels around the area. Uh, so we're doing that again. So next year, look for the town and country issue in the January. January. Uh, this year we had it pushed back a little bit because January this year we did What's New in Ocala, focusing on the new uh, brand, a new look of Ocala Magazine. So we're tying into that way. But that's that's what the whole idea is with the town and country and, issue. And, and, you know, I think part of it, too, is what's helping downtown so much and driving a lot of other growth. It's fitting that it's in your town and country issue is, I think, the renewed recognition over the last couple of years of how important our equine industry is, mm -hmm. and all these events like Live Oak, like the Hits Great yes. American One Million, mm -hmm. um, all the other equine things, OBS and all those, and beginning to connect those events, even though they're mostly happening on the far west side of the county, connecting them into downtown. Uh, and I think you're going to see um, that once the hotel opens, you're going to see that continue to expand in a significant way. And, and I know the city's working on some plans to incorporate equine even more mm -hmm. uh, into downtown. And, and I tell people now, if you think how much downtown has changed in particular in the last 24 months, you, you've not seen anything yet. Wait till the next 24 months. Um, and we could have this conversation a year from now, and we'll be talking about, oh my gosh, can you believe how many new things yeah. there are, yeah, are under yeah. construction? And then 12 months after that, it'll be in the same conversation. Absolutely. And the plus, you've got the Ocala Open that's going on right now at On Top of the World, and the people that are there, the spectators and the players and their families, they need a place to go. So they gravitate toward downtown Ocala, frequent the shops, the restaurants, hotels. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, you said the next 24 months are going to be a big thing. Anything uh, – do you know, I want to ask you about the, the – not the new construction, but the, the buildings that have been empty that are now be, being filled again. A perfect example is that little sandwich shop. That on the corner where Robin and I play, it's gonna. Mm -hmm. th I think it's gonna open mm -hmm. this month, right? Uh, next month. Next, next month. Next, they're shooting April twenty fourth, April twenty fifth. But that's nice to see. It's, it is. it's an empty space is finally gonna have somebody in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, I mean, you have that big hammock uh, brewery and bites. You mm -hmm. come up the street to where it used to be the Bank of America drive through, and that Bank Street. Oh yeah, what's patio, going up there? Bank what's... Street patio bar uh, is going to be a very very cool concept. Uh, they're doing it really well. Uh, you know, you'll have a bar. You're gonna have some permanent food truck type things as well as um, regular visiting food trucks and a big uh, play recreation outdoor area of course right there next to citizen circle is, is it open for st patrick's day 
No. Uh, no, it's a, it will be open. It's going to open about the same time, it looks like, yeah. as, mm-hmm. as Big Hand. Uh, Patty O'Bar just sounds like it's, a St. Yeah. Patrick's Day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And a new bank is opening up right yeah. there, right? It's, of course, the old Bank of America building mm-hmm. uh, will become Silver River Community Bank. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I, I didn't know that. I think we're looking okay. at a, a okay. fall, um, probably a September opening for them. Oh, really? And what's really nice is I like to go places and dress up. And there really hasn't been a lot of places outside of the Ocala Civic Theater or the Riley for certain shows where you feel like you want to dress up. But, boy, you go downtown now and you see a lot of couples. The ladies are dressed to the nines. The fellas have nice shirts and slacks on. And it really makes everything more special yeah. when you're going out for dinner. And, and I think one of the, the really exciting things, and, and someone said it to me, and, and we do it, is, you know, we say, hey, let's go out to eat. Where do you want to go? Oh, I, you know, I, well, let's just go downtown because, mm-hmm. you know, we're building that synergy. We're getting that synergy of enough right. restaurants. And, and there, you know, we just mentioned two more that are coming on. You know, there are one, two, I can think of about three more that are in the works. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so you add what's already there. All of a sudden, you know, there's lots of choices where you think, I'll just go to downtown and then we'll figure out what we're going to do once we get right. there. And Kevin, you really do a fabulous job because you're always open to community input. You always make time for the citizens of Marion County to come in and talk to you. And you're always on the cutting edge of everything, it seems. Well, we try. We try to be out there. Uh, (laughs) You know, and that's the, you know, we've got a community right now where everyone is working together so well. I mean, you know, from the CEP, we're representing the business community, but we have a fantastic relationship with the city. Uh, I work with Pete in particular all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish you'd call me back sooner. But besides that, <laughs> we have a great relationship. I, I have, and I say that because I can say that. I move you up the line as yeah, far sure. as I can. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we have a great relationship with the county. Really, one of the things I think sometimes gets lost is how well our city and county work together. And, and all of these entities all working to help our community the best, which allows us to do some really cool things. If I can add to that, um, I had a conversation with the mayor recently, and he uh, focused on how uh, different businesses that he talks to likes the synergy between the World Equestrian Center and the manufacturing plants that are opening up, like FedEx, Chewy, uh, uh, AutoZone. You know, that's making a difference, that one is helping the other actually grow together. So that's great. And safety is a huge issue. There's a lot of law enforcement presence. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that, that's a good point, Robin. Yeah, you always mm-hmm. forget about law enforcement, but without them, you you know, a lot of people wouldn't feel safe if yeah. if safety is the thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And the new Ranger program downtown is is really, I think, yeah, done that is really good. Well. I like that too because those guys have the answers. Yeah. So yeah. the question is, like, where, where can I some get some water? Yeah. Yeah. The, more, the more life and the more activity there is on the street, actually, the safer it is. Yeah. You know, and, and people will Correct. Yes. will feel much safer. Some of those are design issues, and we've been careful to consider those wider sidewalks like we did on the South Magnolia project down by the movie theater and, and in right. that block. Right. Um, you know, bright lights and, and, and kind of openness. And the more people that we get on the street, frankly, the, the better – yeah. And we're safer. It's perceived to I be. I like the fact that you're honoring some of the movie. I mean, you have two right now. You have Bruce Mozart and who's Jordan that? Klein. Yeah, yeah. That, that is not, that's a nice mm-hmm. tribute to those two guys. You know, and, and I'm get, what do you do? One a year? Is that, is that the plan? That's the Film Festival Foundation who who does that. Um, I think it's one or two a year. Oh, okay. And you know they've been doing a good job of using the theater and 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 showing um, movie about one a month mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. the. Through this, I think a half a year, Kevin. Yes, maybe. Yeah, that's six months. Three in the fall and three in the spring. But so, you know, I think one of the other really exciting things that adds to people downtown is, and we're starting to see a little bit. There's a lot getting ready to come down the pike is in residents downtown. Yeah, mm-hmm. more opportunities yes. for people to live. And I don't know if you all can talk about any of those projects yet, but they're they're getting pretty close. They're getting closer. That that's the singular to me most mm-hmm. important thing. We need reg- We need people on the street who don't have to travel into downtown to get there. So we have roughly between what we've talked about today, midtown and downtown, probably around 30 or 35 residential units, um, probably 18 in 302 Broadway are are owned condos and the others are rentals and and the rates are relatively high because the supply is not there. So, you know, my gauge has always been between three and 500 residents downtown, which a few years ago probably seemed like a pipe dream, but I think it becomes more and more real as we go. So we do have interest in people uh, developing residential units on sites scattered through downtown and midtown. And we're maybe really I'll live downtown, to Robin. That. Think about it. Yeah. I'm ready to have you yeah. down yeah. there. Um, <laughs> John, John Sotomayor, the the story is called "Enacting the Vision." That's 
That's right. All yes. right. Very good. Uh, you bring some great guests to this, these airwaves. Thank you for doing that. My pleasure. John Sotomayor, um, Kevin Shirley, good to see you. Good to see you. Again. Uh, David Boston, is, am I saying your name right. right? Thank you, uh, David and Peter thank Lee. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for coming in. And f- thank and you. The bigger thank you is for what you're doing for our city. You're making mm-hmm. it really beautiful and fun, and it's not just a light up Ocala is the only time we go down there anymore. It's, uh, it's all year long. All year. So. Yep. Good. Thank yeah, you for that. Excellent. Everything's changing. Thank you very much. We are looking forward to seeing the changes. And you know, we got a beer garden in here now, too. Yeah, yes. we do. That's yeah. awesome. Right I don't there. know if that you had anything to do with that, but thank you. All right, we'll take a little break. Be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief. A 69-year-old woman has died from injuries sustained when the 